Thanks for the opportunity to give uh, this presentation a part of uh, our work. And I'm Evert van der Broek, and I work at the, the pathology department of the VU University Medical Center in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And uh, my supervisors are Gerrit Meijer and Raymond Feineman. And this presentation is about structural variant detection in colorectal cancer. And this uh, project is supported by uh, CTMM projects uh, that stands for uh, Center for Translational and Molecular Medicine and uh, by the uh, Cancer Center Amsterdam, VU, uh, VUMC CCA. Colorectal cancer is a major healthcare problem with an incidence worldwide of 1.2 million patients each year and the incidence in the US is uh, almost 150,000 patients and there is an inverse relation between the states of the disease and uh, the survival rates. And in total, approximately 40% of all colorectal cancer patients will die due to metastatic colorectal cancer. In our group, we are focusing on um, biomarker discovery. And this is a uh, picture of an uh, adenoma to carcinoma progression. And we need diagnostic biomarkers for early uh, colorectal cancer uh, detection and we need prognostic biomarkers and predictive biomarkers and I will focus on the prognostic biomarkers. 85% of all colorectal cancers exhibit chromosomal instability resulting in gains and losses of uh, chromosomal segments. And this is a sky plot, scary, uh, scary, um, spectral karyotyping of a high abundant colorectal cancer cell line. And you can clearly see both the numerical and the structural variants in this plot. And I will show you, uh, for example, uh, chromosome 2, in which are uh, more pieces of chromosomes, a piece of DNA present in this tumor than what you expect in a normal situation. And there is a translocation between chromosome 10, this is chromosome 10, and uh, chromosome 23. So the red part belongs to chromosome 10. Cairo and Cairo 2 studies were performed in the Netherlands, of, uh, or phase 3 clinical studies in the Netherlands, and in total 1,575 patients were included. And this study was focusing on uh, chemotherapy in metastatic colorectal cancer. And the Cairo study is published in uh, The Lancet, and the Cairo 2 study is published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And from this uh, patient cohort, we have DNA from 356 patients, it is a representative group, and uh, the DNA is derived from the primary tumor and the matched normal tissue, and uh, the DNA is isolated from uh, FFPE material. This whole set of 356 uh, DNA samples was performed on an uh, adjuvant 180K CGH array, a comparative genomic hybridization, and after segmentation and calling, we are able to find uh, the copy number changes, the numerical aberrations, and I will explain this in the next few slides. This is a profile of a uh, tumor, and on uh, the y-axis you can see the log 2 ratio of the tumor DNA compared to the normal DNA, and on the x-axis are all the chromosomes, and each uh, black dot represents a probe, and the colored lines are the segment values. And we use uh, the CTH call package uh, to define the gains and the losses, and the green parts mean that there is a gain in the tumor compared to uh, normal, and the red that there is a loss. So this is the aim of my project, to identify the recurrent somatic structural genomic variants that cause colorectal cancer. So and we used the CGH uh, profiles from these uh, large cohort of 356 chiro samples, and after segmentation, we identified uh, the breakpoints and merged the breakpoints per gene. And we ended up with a list of candidates' uh, genes uh, potentially involved in structural variants. And this is the uh, CTH plot again. 
And uh, the definition of a uh, breakpoint uh, is, uh, is here. The breakpoints are defined by the start position of the first posi uh, start position of the first probe of each segment, and uh, that suggests an underlying chromosomal break that could disrupt the normal architecture and the normal function of a gene. And we found in total 5,737 genes with one or more breakpoints, and 482 genes or our candidate genes are identified with a recurrent breakpoint with a false discovery rate less than 0.1. And here are, in this bar graph, the uh, most affected, 50 most affected candidate genes, and on the y-axis, the amount of affected samples in every CDH. And MacroD2 is the gene that is most prominent. It is uh, present in uh, about 40% of all samples. And we have uh, clinical data available. So we asked the question uh, whether this effect, the, this have an effect on uh, survival. And this is a Kepler-Meyer plot, and the uh, red line represents the samples lacking a breakpoint in MacroD2, and the blue line are the patients with a breakpoint in MacroD2. So we have our candidate list, but there are uh, some important limitations using RCTH data. And the first is about the probe density. So the average distance between the probes is uh, 70 kb, so the breakpoint location is only an estimation. And we don't have insight in the structure of the DNA, so uh, we don't know which part uh, stitched to what, and all the copy number neutral uh, events uh, will be missed, the balanced events. So we need uh, candidate validation. And next generation sequencing can help us with these problems. Okay. And we used uh, the Cancer Genome Atlas Correct Cancer Cell Lines of samples, sorry, uh, which are uh, sequenced, uh, whole genome sequencing, parent sequencing, and we uh, only used the uh, tumor normal sets. And we developed our own uh, algorithm, in depth algorithm for structural variant detection, which is candidate-driven. And uh, uh, we selected genes lacking a breakpoint as a negative control. And our algorithm is mainly based on a read-pair approach. And the criteria for the discordance are listed here. It's based on the location uh, of the reads, the bridge length, and the orientation of the reads. And these are the discordant pair types translocation when the reads, the, the mate reads are uh, aligned on different chromosomes, and an insertion and a deletion based on the bridge length, and an inversion and an eversion based on the orientation of the reads, and a single map read could indicate that there is a breakpoint. And we combined this uh, read pair approach with a read depth analysis and we defined the breakpoint location uh, using the soft clipped part and the matched part of the reads. And at least we determined the tumor specific events. And this is an example of a translocation, macro D2. The colored reads uh, indicate the translocation uh, DPs. And uh, here you can see the uh, fusion partner. And an additional evidence is that there is a clear breakpoint in both, uh, both parts of the, of the event, in the gene itself and in the fusion gene. And overlapping reads with the same uh, DP type were grouped together, and the distribu distribution is, uh, is in this pie chart, and the biggest part of all DP groups are the deletions and these are the eversions, the inversions, the insertions, and 8% of all DPs are translocation. This is the data over all samples, over all the candidates. And this is preliminary data. And I will focus in this presentation on translocation. And we found in the, our candidate genes a five-fold high, higher number of translocation DP groups compared to our control genes. And this is the distribution of the 
translocation deeply groups, that is on the y-axis, over all the candidate genes on the x-axis, and focusing on, uh, of zooming in on the first uh, 20, uh, we see that uh, macro-D2 is again the most prominent one. And we plot these data together in this plot. On the y-axis, the frequency of the translocation DP groups. And on the x-axis, the frequency of affected samples in error CGH uh, breakpoint analysis. And um, macro D2 is on the uh, upper right part of this graph. And there are some genes that correlate very nicely. And there are uh, other clouds. And, and that is work in progress. Uh, so we want to know what these uh, candidates are. These are all the candidate genes. To conclude, we identified 482 candidate genes with recurrent breakpoints in a cohort of 356 colorectal cancer samples based on RCGH breakpoint analysis. And the TCGH provide an essential uh, colorectal cancer reference data set to validate our uh, candidate genes validate the structural variance in uh, the candidate breakpoints. And identification of breakpoints based on error CGH is uh, correlated with structural variant detection in TCGH data. And further studies will be performed to investigate clinical and functional significance of validated candidate genes. Thanks. That was my presentation. And on time besides. Uh, questions, yes. Yes, uh, this is Angela from Harvard. I, my first question is, did you use the low-pass uh, whole genome samples for your validation? And second, can you comment um, on the presence of how many TCF uh, fusions you found by your method? Because uh, we found them in the, in the marker paper. And also, the, the Meyerson group previously published TCF7 fusions. We are digging in the data at this moment, and um, uh, we uh, used uh, indeed the low coverage samples, and the most challenging part of using the low coverage data is uh, the statistical analysis. Right. And that is uh, one of the problems, so we try to find the recurrent uh, events over the whole uh, sample set. So that's, that is uh, what we try to do, and we have our candidate list based on breakpoint analysis. So. Uh, we, can, uh, we can be very sensitive in our uh, computational methods. And we, uh, we didn't find the, uh, the, the fusion gene you mentioned. We only have the three uh, high coverage uh, samples. So I don't know if one of the samples should harbor this uh, fusion gene. Last quick question, Bro, and quick answer. Hi, I thought it was a great talk. Um, I wondered if you had looked at the RNA-seq data uh, from these <coughs> TCJ colorectal samples to see the effect on uh, transcripts? Yes, that is uh, the next step. So uh, we haven't done that at this, this moment, but uh, we will do that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. That's an excellent example of how we hope increasingly the TCGA data will be used in the context of other sorts of studies, including ones which are uh, designed for uh, clinical answers to clinical questions.